You're listening to Spurs Cast, episode 658. My name is Paul Garcia, and I'm your host here on Spurs Cast. Today, I'll be joined by Project Spurs writers uh, Pen- Benjamin Borstein and former Project Spurs writer Trevor Zigraf. With the NBA draft now less than two weeks away, Ben, Trevor, and I wanted to discuss players in the first round and second round range in our annual draft episode. Let's jump right into this episode. Um, let's, uh, guys, how are y'all doing? Ben, uh, you first. How are you doing, Ben? Fantastic. How are you doing, man? I'm, I'm doing better. Uh, Trevor, how are you doing? Fantastic. Fantastic. We're glad to see you <clears throat> healthy and doing well. It's early yes. here on the West Coast, but I couldn't think of a better way to start my day than with you guys. Yes. Yeah, so as first cast listeners, you all know it's been a while since I've recorded an episode. Uh, my voice is a little nasally. What does that mean? I had COVID-19, unfortunately. Uh, I'm, I am doing a lot better, so uh, that's why we took a while here to record, but we're back now. All right, especially right before the draft, so this is a good timing to, to come back. All right, so topic one, guys, let's begin with the first topic, which is called trading up. So again, it's pretty much a consensus that it's going to be some sort of order of Jabari Smith, um, Chet Holmgren, and Paolo Banchero in the top three, uh, in that sort of order. However, I've seen a few mocks here lately that have slipped uh, Paolo and Chet to four at different mocks. So again, in the event that Paolo or Chet did fall to four, which is the Sacramento Kings' pick, do you all think the Spurs have a, tra- a, a, a trade package good enough that the Kings would accept again, only if the case happened where Paolo or Chet fell to, uh, to four, um, uh, Trevor, go ahead and start off that conversation. Um, I think you could build something and I would do it. Um, generally speaking, obviously the, it would depend on specifics, but, um, I think you could do it like nine twenty, and Keldon nine twenty. Well, Keldon, I, I always come back to Keldon just because he's extension mm. eligible and mm-hmm. he's about to, He's going to get expensive in the next year. The Spurs do hang on to him. So given all the wings they have, I wonder. I mean, I, I think the Spurs really value Keldon Johnson, but I just wonder how much they value him. Um, I would do it, though. And I think just some package of picks and Keldon. I, I, it, I find it tough seeing them being like Devin and Keldon or Primo. And you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that seems like a bit much for me. Um but, but generally speaking, I, I would do it because I do think uh, Paolo and especially Chet are like, you know, those are potential all-stars. And the Spurs have, they have DeJounte, and then we don't know after that, you know? Yeah. Ben, what's your response to that question? Yeah, it's tough. Uh, but uh, you're, Trevor's probably on the right track here, I'd say. You, you have to – there has to be, like – there probably has to be two picks. You probably have to give up another uh, asset uh, player. I, I would also agree that it's probably Keldon Johnson. I think just because Devin Vassell is a much more defined role. Yeah. He's very much a two and he can slide to three if you need him. But for the most part, Keldon is an undersized four. He can't really play three yet. And I think, for them, that's going to be the difference. And like Trevor said, he's going to be extension eligible, whereas Devin is only going to be going into his third year. So I think he's there, there's another season until they have to extend him. So it also kind of elongates their timeline where they can say, all right, let's really see what we get out of Devin Vassell this year. And then we can decide if we want to extend him. I'm, I'm going to assume they are unless Keldon or unless Devin Vassell just falls off a cliff this year. Mm-hmm. But um, I think it kind of allows them some cap flexibility there as well. And um, I wouldn't put it past the Kings to screw up the pick or a <laughs> trade anyway, because that's what the Kings do. And I mean, I know that the Kings have worked out, like they've worked out Dyson Daniels. Um, I'm trying to remember who else they've worked out that is closer to the 10 range than the four range as far as picks go. <clears throat> um, so I think they're doing their due diligence. Uh, it's not like they're just like, Hey, Oh, they brought in Shaden Sharp. That's what they brought in. But it's not like they're just like, hey, we're just going to bring in Jaden Ivey and Keegan Murray, and that's going to be what we're going to do because we're, we're keeping the pick. So I think um, they want to upgrade, especially defensively. So if it's nine and Devin Vassell and then some other smaller stuff, then I don't know if you do it. You absolutely have to have a, a very long meeting about it, though. 
Yeah, and the thing about that would be that they would be on the clock because, you know, again, it's, it's not expected that Paolo or Chet falls, but again, that, if that happens, and then something else, just right. I think other teams are going to be calling the Kings as well. You know, they're going to have their trade packages. If, if Paolo or Chet are there, you know, like you guys said, it's a, those top three guys can talk, turn into all-stars down the road. I think that, yeah. Um, so, so I agree with you guys. I think that if you're the Spurs and those two players, um, one of them falls, I think ninth and, and Devin or ninth and Keldon, something like a package built around that uh, would be the best offer to send the Kings. Uh, now let's talk about other prospects before ninth. So there's two players in particular I'm, I'm a little interested in. Uh, first guy is Keegan Murray, 6'8 player out of Iowa. Uh, he's, his mock average is about six on the, on the mocks. Uh, then you, a player you just mentioned, um, Trevor Shaden Sharp, uh, also 6'6 out of Kentucky. Uh, his mock averages as well kind of are in that six range. Um, so again, these two players are expected to go before before ninth. Now, uh, my question to you guys, I'll start off with Ben here. Um, are, are nine and 20 or nine and 25 enough to move up? And is it even worth doing that for those two, either of those two players? I, if if you're moving up, you have to get into the top four in this draft. I think it's okay. not it's not worth it to try and move up maybe two spots to get Keegan Murray, especially because there's it's it's low, but there is a very small outside chance Keegan Murray falls to nine for some mm -hmm. dumb reason. It could happen. It's again incredibly unlikely to happen. I want to make this clear. I am not saying that this is a very real possibility, but um, there is an outside chance he falls to nine, and then the Spurs, if they don't take him, then there should be riots. But um, to me, there's just what the Spurs have with picks. You could maybe you could maybe do like twenty five and the thirty eight to move up but i don't you know if you have a a top 10 pick like you know you have the the sixth to the fifth pick like are you taking those two later picks to get into that pick like that doesn't make sense uh, you know just out of context unless the spurs are giving a lot more but if you're doing that and you're the spurs i don't think it's worth it to get into the five or six spot it's just i think it's top four or bust if you're going to trade up Okay, Trevor, what's your response there? I think I agree with Ben. Um, I, don't, I do like Keegan Murray. And, you know, when the season ended, I was like, I don't know. He looks a little slow. He looks a little small. He looks a little this. He looks a little that. And then I just, mm -hmm. like, kept watching stuff. And, like, I have a couple of buddies who are – they're from Iowa. Um, my college roommate and a few other buddies. And, they're you know, they're big Iowa Hawkins. And they just – sing his praises the work ethic etc cetera, etc cetera. and i'm like am i just overthinking this like is keegan murray the fifth or sixth best prospect in this draft he probably is and so i would love i think he would be great on the spurs especially because he seems pretty low maintenance but i don't yeah i guess i just i just need to know what it costs 9 and 20 seems a little seems a little rich to move up okay. um 25 though i i would think about it but i think ben's right there's actually a slim chance he if like if he gets past six and then you're like oh keegan murray might fall to nine because portland maybe needs him maybe they're trading out you don't know like they, the rumor mm -hmm. is they're trading for jeremy grant um yeah. and then new orleans doesn't need a power forward <laughs> like they just do not so um i would wait and see and i just look i'll be honest man the shade and sharp's like my biggest question mark not with his talent i just don't know anything about him i mean i know what i've read about him but yeah. I, like he's he's the mystery man there's, there's no, there's, there's no good tape. There's right. Like, there's no consensus on him. Yeah. He's terrifying to me. Like, I don't, I'm not the, the only thing you can point to is, Oh, well he had a 49 inch vertical at the combine. O okay. And like, there's more to basketball than that. Like if he fell to nine and the Spurs got him at nine, I'd be like, yeah, sure. Um, but I'm trading up for him. Just seems like a whole nother. Yes. Just, yeah. Either of you can take this question. Is there anybody else that the Spurs should trade up for in that like six, seven, eight range or five, you know, five, six, seven, eight range, not four, you know, is there anybody else y'all would, y'all would think there's, that's worth trading up for? Let me peruse your spreadsheet real quick. Probably not. Uh, yeah. I mean, Jaden Ivey, Jaden Ivey is interesting, uh, but pretty duplicitous with what, I mean, if the Spurs were just like, we don't have a superstar, we need a guy with superstar potential and trade that for Jaden Ivey, then I would understand it. But then you're, again, you're talking about, getting back into three or four mm -hmm. Ben. yeah there's to me there's not a lot of guys worth trading up to five or six like this this would be a much different question if the spurs were like at the very end of the lottery or mm -hmm. just outside of the lottery 
and they still had three picks spread out in that first round, I would say they could probably just get all three first round, all three of those first rounders or a combination of the two and the second rounder and move up into the top 10 and get something. But being at nine already, you're like, you're, it's kind of no man's land in this draft because this draft yeah. doesn't project to be super deep. Like there's mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, you have your top three guys and you have Jada and Ivy who like might be in a tier of his own or he's at the very least like kind of the top of the second tier to me. Mm -hmm. I, th I think there are some guys who probably have him in that top tier with the other three, but it's just because like those other three guys are all bigs. Jaden Ivy is the only guard and he's the best guard in this draft. Okay. But yeah, you, you got to be moving up for one of those guys, especially the Spurs who need a big man. Like you're moving up into the top three or four to potentially grab whatever leftover <clears throat> big man there is after the magic have picked. Okay, so um, now let's move on to our second topic, which is prospects in the ninth range, which is the, Sp the Spurs' pick. So, uh, Trevor, I'm going to let Ben take this uh, the first because he's kind of done this with me before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of introduce the players that are kind of on the mocks right now. And then you can kind of just list out the players you don't want there at nine and then kind of go from there and, and then, you know, go out the play and then talk about the players you would prefer. Uh, and then, you know, we can go back and forth here. So first, let's introduce the players. So uh, these are players who are mentioned on multiple mocks. The first player is Benedict, Benedict uh, Matherin, 6'6", six, six out of Arizona. He's mock average is about eight. So right before the Spurs' is pick, we have Jalen Duran, 6'11", big out of Memphis. His mock average is 11th. Uh, we have Jeremy Sochan, 6'9", uh, out of Baylor. His mock average is 12th, and the Spurs reportedly have interest. Now, when I say interest, it means either A, the Spurs are supposed to work out the player, B, they have worked out the player, or C, they've at least interviewed the player. So, again, there's some level of interest in the player. Uh, so, Jeremy Sochan, 6'9", out of Baylor. So, those are three players who are um, mentioned on multiple mocks for, the, for at the Spurs' pick at night. Now, here's some players that are, have one mock mentions that I've seen. Uh, Dyson Daniel, 6'6", six, six, um, guard at a 6'6", uh, six, six, uh, uh, G League uh, Ignite player. Uh, his mock average is eighth, and the Spurs also have interest in him. And then we have Uzmain Jang, um, 6'9 out of New the New Zealand Breakers. His mock average is 14th. Now, there's no perfect prospect in, in that ninth range. Um, so, Ben, go ahead and first, I guess, like, like I said, kind of take off the players you wouldn't prefer there, and then who would you most uh, like there uh, at ninth? Honestly, um, I, I like. I think I like all these guys, maybe except Jang. I think ninth is a bit rich for him or a bit high for him. I should say not rich, mm -hmm. but uh, that's a bit high for I him. Rich. <laughs> but it's uh, it's a bit too much of a gamble, I think, which people are going to be like, oh, it's a top 10 pick. You can't afford, you know, you can't afford to try and be safe. I'm like, yes, but also there are plenty of options that are fairly good risks with, you know, little downside. You got to find those guys. You got to find the high floor guys. Mm -hmm. um, to me, the, the other four of those guys fit. I would love Benedict Mather. <clears throat> he's not really the big that the Spurs are looking for, but I think he's a really nice wing player. He's really athletic. He's actually a good lob target. He is pretty fearless. He plays with a chip on his shoulder, which I enjoyed watching at Arizona. And he, he, I think he has the opportunity to really be a good three point shooter. I mean, his percentages were already good, but um, like in, in specific settings, like catch and shooter, you know, one pull up off the, off the dribble, stuff like that. I think he can, I think he's going to improve that and he's going to be a really nice shooter. Um, I've, for me, the top two are Duran and Sohan. And I think it's, it really comes down to your preference with those two. Cause both of those dudes are still pretty raw and they're both young, which is good. I mean, Duran's not going to turn 19 until like, I think either like right when the season is starting or right before maybe. Mm -hmm. So he's super young. You can mold him. He has a lot of basketball ahead of him. Sohan is similar. Um, he, Sohan's defense far and above a lot of these other wing players right now. And I think that's why he's very attractive to teams mm -hmm. and they're kind of saying to themselves, well, if we can fix his shot, if we can get him shooting consistently, then we've got everything we we need. And I, I imagine if the Spurs are going to draft him, they're going to say, all right, we're going to sit him down with chip and they're going to have many sessions together. Um, so those are the top two for me. Dyson Daniels is like, if the Spurs picked him, I wouldn't be upset, but he's probably my third or he's okay. my fourth out of those guys. And he's 
Um, I mean, I, he's listed, he came into the uh, combine. I think he ended up being listed like six, seven and a half. Oh, okay. For what that's worth. Cause a lot of people, a lot of people said if he comes into the combine and he, you know, his measurables are a little different than what they expected, that would help him a lot. And I think it has, he's generated a lot more interest in, from some top 10 teams. So um, in order for me, I think it would be Sohan, Duran, Matherin, Daniels. That would be my order. Okay. Uh, Trevor, what are your, what is your, what is your response there? You know, again, who, who um, would you, know, you know, I guess least to favorite uh, prospect there out of those, those five. So, I don't mind Jang. I, I do mind him at nine. I would, that's one where it's like, can we move back? Like, I don't, I'm not really an advocate of moving back in this draft, but that's one where I'm like, can, can we move back to yeah. like 11? Like just okay. a couple spots, a couple extra something. Um, but again, like that's like, I like the idea of Usman Jang. I don't know, like, who does anybody know? Um, next, uh, as, as far as we're, like, so this is five to five to one, four, yeah, I would say of. Ohan. Uh, I'm just, I'm probably lower than consensus on Sohan, but I just don't buy the jumper. I don't think he ever, like, he shot 59% from the free throw line, and that just doesn't seem like, like I don't think he can fix that. I, mm -hmm. I just don't know what you do to fix it. Um, I mean, you can, but, like, his, it's not like he's got, like, some, like, mechanical issue. I just don't think he has touch. And if he can't shoot, then I don't know what else he does on offense. So... I don't know. I get like less athletic or Aaron Gordon vibes from him, which is not a terrible basketball player, but also it feels like just a really high level role to player. Mm -hmm. um, I really like Dyson Daniels. I think he's like some, like if we're just doing like Tom's, like he's some hybrid of Derek White and Kyle Anderson. And that's awesome. <laughs> and I think he's going to be a really good defender from day one. He's a really good passer. Um, and then it's Duran and Matherin. Actually, I probably like Daniels a little bit better than I like uh, Duran, but I do think Duran, like, I, I buy the passing upside. Um, you know, you got to figure out, he needs, like, some sort of offensive move, whether it's just a jump hook or something to punish smaller units, but I really like him. I think he's got defensive player of the year potential, like, just because his his athleticism is off the charts, and he's, and like Ben said, I just looked <laughs> it up. Duran's 19 in, uh, I think, late November. Mm -hmm. so like super young like he's primo young like he's this year's josh primo if you're just trying to like say yeah. like we want to get a guy who's probably we're probably getting a guy a year early um and we just want to mold him into what we think he can be uh but matherin's my guy at nine and i tried to resist that because um a he's a guard and b uh, i'm a big arizona basketball fan and so i tend to overvalue arizona guys but like i just you know what it is, guys? This is what I'm doing. I'm overvaluing the NBA Finals because I watch 6'7", Jalen Brown, who can't really dribble all that well, but he can hit a three, and he's super explosive around the rim. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm just like, how do you not want something, someone who can do that on your team? Yeah. And Ben's right. Matherin's a really good shooter, and he shoots with deep range. Like, it's not just like – he's not shooting from college three. He's shooting from NBA three when he's shooting those threes. And so – to me, that is just, um, it's incredibly appealing. And I think, like, you can fit him in. And he, he's great next to DeJounte Murray. And if we are working under the assumption that DeJounte Murray is uh, the point guard for at least the near, let's, let's just say DeJounte is going to, they're going to resign him. He's going to be here for another four to five years. Matherin is so good next to him. You know, you got to figure out. Does that mean you're saying by the Lonnie? Does Keldon move on eventually? Like, because you are just going to have this like overwhelming, this abundance yeah. of, of wing talent, which you already have. But I just, M Matherin's Ben's right. He's got a chance. Just a very good scorer. I think his defense will come around. Like he's he's a good defender. He's not a great defender, but big big fan, big fan. So it's Matherin, Daniels, Duran, Sohan, Jay. I okay. wouldn't be mad at Sohan. By the way, I, I think I kind of, I think I kind of just crapped on him a little bit. He's his de Ben's right. His defense is like next level already, and you can't be mad about that. Ben, uh, who is your your top guy again out of those five players? I think I sided with Sohan, and Duran was two. Yeah. Okay, okay, all right. And then uh, just again, I, I, if you guys don't have a prospect, that's fine. But any other guys that y'all would prefer there at nine that I didn't list here that I haven't been mentioned the mocks? 
I'd love for Keegan Murray to drop. Yeah, I mean, aside from those players, yeah. And I think the bad thing about Mathurin too is that a lot. I see a lot of places he's seven eight. He's actually supposed to go before before nine. So that's that's yeah. another thing to watch. All right, let's go ahead and move on. So again, uh, Mathurin, uh, Sohan, or, or Duran are the, are the uh, players. And now a quick think, word. Um, oh, go ahead. Paul, I'm sorry to cut you off. I do think Tari Eason is interesting. I mean, I think he's he's worked out for the Spurs. I don't know mm-hmm. if they're looking at him more for twenty or more for nine. His range seems to be all over the place right now. Yeah. Um, but. Man, that guy, he's like 6'8", 6'9", 7'2", wingspan, Kawhi leonard size hands. Yep. Um, can really get to the basket with his right hand. Um, improved shooter, really good defender. But um, I just don't know, like, is nine, nine's probably a little too high for him. Yeah, but yeah. he's intriguing, man. He's really intriguing. Yeah, his average is 16th right now. I just looked real quick. Yeah. And so, yeah, that would be – but, I mean, like I, t- like I mentioned before with Ben, I mean – the Spurs did the Supremo. He wasn't supposed to go to 28th, and they went and took him at 12 last year or whatever it was, right. 11. So, again, I, that's just always something to keep keep in mind with the Spurs making a reach because they have show they have done this. All right, so now, guys, we're going to take a, qu- a quick word from our sponsors and listen. The NBA playoff action is nonstop at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. This week, new customers can bet just $5 on any team to win and get $150 in free bets if they do. Looking to turn a small bet into a big payday during the NBA playoffs? With DraftKings Same Game Parlays, you can do just that. Create your own parlay by combining multiple bets like which team will win, total threes made, total rebounds, and more, and boom, you have a shot at an even bigger payout. Right now, all customers can place a Same Game Parlay with three or more legs and get a free bet back up to $25 if one leg doesn't hit. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code TBPN. Bet $5 on any NBA team to win their game and get $150 in free bets if they do. That's promo code TBPN. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. All right, let's go to jump right back into this episode. Now let's go on to our third topic, which is prospects in the 20th pick range. So this is kind of very similar to what we just did. You guys can, again, knock out the players you wouldn't prefer there at 20. And then, um, and then you know, if, if there's a consensus, I mean, there's a player that you really that you would really like at 20, go ahead and mention that player. So first, let's go off with the the, the one mock mentions. Uh, first player is a guy who's, who's really shot up draft boards, Ben, since, since you and I, I last talked, is Jalen Williams, 6'6", six, six player out of Santa Clara. His mock average is 23rd. Um, it was about second round when we first started talking a few weeks ago, but he's really shot up. Uh, then we have Jaden Hardy, um, 6'3", out of the G League Ignite. His mock average is about 23rd. We have Kennedy Chandler, six foot out of Tennessee. Mock average is 27th, later first round. And then Patrick Baldwin Jr., 6'9", out of Milwaukee. Mock average 35th. And the Spurs reportedly have interest in him. Uh, who is the perfect player at 20 that at multiple, I mean, like five or six mocks that I saw say at this player, and that is Nikola Jovic, 6'10", out of Mega Mozart. He is the one player who continues to pop up there at 20 uh, for the Spurs. All right, so let's start off with Trevor this time. Trevor, again, you know, players, you know, for, again, for, from least favorite to favorite there at 20 uh, among those players. Um, the Jovic thing just cracks me up because you just like, it's just like 20 years of Spurs drafts, and yeah. you're just... <laughs> That's all it is. I don't even know if they worked it out or they interviewed him. Do you know? Have you seen anything? No, I haven't seen nothing. No, as of yesterday that I updated yeah. everything, I did not see anything about that. Uh, I'm sure they. I'm sure they've done their homework. Like I have. I'm sure they've looked at him quite a bit because if you're six, you can handle and you can shoot. Then, um, uh, anyways, uh, so Chandler. Uh, you know, no offense to Kennedy Chandler, but like, no. Um, I, I think Kennedy Chandler's got a spot in the league, but I just. I, I don't know, it's not, not at starts. 20. If, if, if you told me at 25, they were just like, this is the best guy left on our board. And um, sure. Um, but not at 20. 20 seems like there's just way too much other stuff yeah. going to be on the board. Um, so, so he's at the bottom. <laughs> um, and then it's probably Patrick Baldwin Jr. Because I'm just scared of him by yeah. the lack of productivity. I know, I feel like that feels dumb considering how, um, you know, what a study was before college and he just had a really terrible season. So maybe I shouldn't uh, just look at his college season, but that and the lack of athleticism both scare me. And Ben, I, maybe you know a little bit more about it. Was he a better athlete before college? Like, is that just injuries and he's still not all the way back? I think it's a little bit of injuries. Um, and it's, 
I, I, he may, and he may be one of those guys who just doesn't test well. Could be, but you know, I, I'm, that's a shot in the dark. I honestly, I don't know, but um, I, I actually would have to go back and look at a bunch of his yeah. high school stuff. It's been a while since I watched it. Um, so then it's Hardy and Williams, like in that order. Um, I do think Jalen Williams is like, like if you're just like we need to do everything wing off the bench, it just feels like Jalen Williams is roll to a T. Um, so like him um but the guy who i actually like the most of 20 guys it has not been mentioned with the spurs but it's ej liddell uh okay just if we're talking about the spurs need front court help especially if they if they do go like matherin or daniels uh mm -hmm. or, or even like someone like johnny davis who we didn't really talk about because i don't think ben or i really like for the spurs um but um that's another guard slash wing ej liddell's like he's six seven from ohio state he's a junior um 240 what's up 240 yeah yeah it's like, like, yeah. like huge wingspan yeah. hell of a shot blocker um and just and can hit threes now like he he has learned to hit threes and he hit threes at a pretty high clip at ohio state and so like if there's this idea that like the spurs a need to bolster their front line and become more versatile in their front line like mm -hmm. that guy can probably play some four but he could definitely be your small ball center. Like he's he's sturdy enough that like except for like Joel Embiid, Nikola Yo Nikola Jokic. Sorry, I almost said Nikola Jokic. Uh, Embiid and Jokic are, are problems for everybody. But like Liddell's probably going to be able to stand up literally anybody else that comes into the paint, and he's a hell of a shot blocker. Like transition shot blocker, uh, help shot blocker. Like this dude is everywhere. And so like if the idea is like Jakub Pertl could get played off the the floor. Uh, in certain situations, then you want to bring in a guy who's not going to get played on the floor, and that's a guy like Liddell. And I, I love him at 20 if he's still there. Okay, and he's definitely in that range. His his range is 23rd, so again, it's like right there at 20, so he could definitely uh, be there. And I will say something about what you mentioned about Spurs' interest. So this one, the reason why I didn't say that they have interest is because Tom, Tom Osborne, who I really, you know, I really trust his words when, when he writes, he wrote it weirdly in his article. I, I, he wrote that, he put, other players projected as first for a late first-round picks the Spurs could be eyeing uh, include former um, uh, Ohio State forward EJ Liddell and a bunch of other players. So again, Osborne wrote that, you know, they could be eyeing, but he didn't actually say that they've interviewed him or they worked him out. So again, I really trust Tom's word, uh, Osborne of the Express News, but that's why I didn't mention him as Spurs. So again, the Spurs sure. might definitely have interest uh, according to, to Osborne's uh, writing here. All right, Ben, go ahead and take this question. Um, you know, again, your, your, your least favorite to favorite prospects here and kind of like what Trevor did, uh, mention anybody who's not meant, if there's anybody specifically you would prefer at 20 that's not mentioned in this list. Yeah, I, I was actually going to save EJ Liddell for 25th. I thought there might be a chance he could drop there. And I thought mm -hmm. the Spurs would be getting a major steal for him at 25 i'd still like him at 20 as well if, like if they made that pick i would not be mad at all for all of those reasons trevor mentioned i and he's he's not like a supremely athletic guy he gets his blocks because he's a smart player yep. like he, he's very good with his timing he uses his wingspan for the most part he stays on his feet he keeps his hands up and, and you know he doesn't do a lot of dumb things which is great you know what? You know what the the Liddell at twenty like why I just say get him at twenty and then figure out twenty five is it just reminds me of when the Spurs drafted Lucas Samanich at nineteen mm -hmm. and I and like Brandon Clark, Nas, uh, Nas Little, and uh, Bible were still on the board, and uh, so I think Grant Williams was still on the board, um, and I totally understood what the Spurs were doing, like yeah. just like this. This is trying to hit the home run and I I 100 percent understood it I'll I will still defend that pick uh but it didn't work out and yeah. maybe maybe don't do that again <laughs> yeah trust trust the scouting go with the scouting don't overthink it um which is why I would also <clears throat> say Kennedy Chandler I'm out yeah. I'm out on Kennedy Chandler like he's just like Trevor said, he has a place in this league. I just don't think it's with the Spurs. He is just mm -hmm. too small for my liking. It he was really good. Nervous. He was really good at Tennessee. He was really good. But yeah, he was. I mean, that's that's why he's going to get picked in the first round. Uh, just not at twenty, I don't think. And mm -hmm. who knows? I might look like an idiot and he gets picked before that. But we'll no. see. Um, and I, I like to just for Clarence is Jalen Williams out of Santa Clara, not yeah. Jalen Williams <laughs> not Arkansas, out of yes. Arkansas. Yeah. Yeah. They spell their name differently. Mm -hmm. Dylan Williams out of Arkansas spells it with a Y. Jalen Williams out of Santa Clara does not. Um, 
So when when we're talking about these, when we're talking about Jalen Williams, we're talking about Santa Clara, six six, not a big man. Just so yeah. it's clear. I know some people will will just hear the name and they'll be like, oh, the guy from Arkansas. It's like, no, not who we're talking about. But for me, um, I like Jovic a lot. His issue is going to be playing defense. He just oof. right now he like yeah. just really doesn't care to. I mean, I imagine if he wanted to and and cared enough, he could be a decent defender. He, you know, he could be even. He wouldn't be a sieve. He could probably be even. Um, but him at 20 feels almost like a steal for the reasons Trevor mentioned. Very good on offense, can pass it, has really nice feel, can handle the ball. He does Jokic-esque things. <clears throat> not to say he does it at the same level, not to say he's like the next Jokic. I'm not saying that. Just saying there he does some really nice things offensively that make teammates better, that make him better. And I think the this difference in style from the NBA and European ball might benefit him. Um Jaden Hardy doesn't do it for me. He's at the bottom with Kennedy Chandler. Uh, Patrick Baldwin Jr. also terrifies me. I think he played 10, maybe 11 games for Milwaukee, for the University of Milwaukee, who is in the Horizon League. Um, and his output was not good. And not he, was bad. He, was, he was just bad. Last yeah. year, there's no well, other way to say it. I was trying to be nice, but yes, he was bad. He was like, this is a we're talking about a five star guy who should basically be dominating the Horizon League, and he wasn't. Uh, he didn't even come close. So, it's the what with with what you heard from him coming out of high school and what with what he actually showed at the collegiate level is terrifying. They are vastly different ends of the spectrum. So. He terrifies me. I would not want to pick him at 20. I probably wouldn't want to pick him at 25 either, but I could understand it if you're coming into that pick as we're going to use this as the project and maybe we send him to the G League to get his confidence back and really see what's going on here Yeah, and, and do that, and that's fine. And there's no expectation he plays in San Antonio year one, maybe even year two, depending on how other guys are doing. But – I think out of this group, I think I have Jovic at, at one for the 20th pick, and okay. then I would do Jalen Williams. And this is also dependent on who's getting picked at nine. Because, like, if we, if, you know, if Trevor and I kind of get our wish and Matherin is there and he goes at nine, it doesn't really make sense to me to get Jalen Williams mm -hmm. or Jaden Hardy. Or Jaden Hardy. There's almost a bit of redundancy there, and you don't need that. The Spurs don't need that yeah. on the on the perimeter at all. So Jovic would make perfect sense there. But if you get a guy like Sohan, I think you could argue that those two could still potentially play together. They don't really play the same position. Nope. But you might feel more comfortable getting Jalen Williams because he plays more on the wing. He's very clearly a wing guy, and – you like all the other things that he does. I mean, he was an all WCC selection. He, he played really well against Gonzaga. He played really well all year. So he, he does just a little bit of everything. And like, he, he shoots the ball well. So, you know, I don't, I don't see anything bad about that pick. So like Jovic and Williams, 1A, 1B probably for me. Okay. Now for a fourth topic, let's go ahead and explore some pro draft prospects in the 25th pick range. Now, there are a lot of players listed here. There are actually some players we've already mentioned before. So what we're not going to do, we're not going to rank these players from least to favorite. Uh, you guys could just, um, again, tell me, you know, who is your favorite player if, if, it's, if it's a player amongst this list or if it's, if it's a player who's not on this list. All right, so let's first begin. They're all one mock mentions, all these players. So again, that 25th pick could go anywhere according to these mock drafts. Uh, we have Jaden Harder, who, who we've already um, discussed. Uh, mock average is 23rd. A new player who we haven't discussed is Kendall Brown. 6'8 out of Baylor, mock average is 25th. So, so right there at 25th, like for the Spurs' pick. A uh, guy you guys both said no to already, Kennedy Chandler, uh, mock average 27th. A new player, uh, Dalen Terry, 6'7 out of Arizona, mock average is 29th. Um, a guy we've already uh, uh, discussed, Patrick Baldwin Jr., um, mock average is 35th. A new player, Christian Braun, 6'6 out of Kansas, mock average is 32nd. Another new player is Ryan Rollins, 6'3 out of Toledo. His mock average is 34th. And then lastly, uh, Caleb Houston, 
uh, Houston, Houston, uh, six, eight out of Michigan mock average is 37. All right, Trevor, you go ahead and take this one. Um, again, is there any player you would uh, prefer there at 25th or, um, is there anybody not mentioned? Um, I mean, I just like the wingy guys. So Kendall Brown, Dale and Terry, uh, even Patrick Baldwin, like, uh, again, I'm not a huge Patrick Baldwin guy, but like at 25, like that's, these are like lottery tickets at this point. Um, mm -hmm. Christian, uh, I don't know about Christian Brown. I mean, maybe I'm, I don't know. I, I, maybe I just need to watch more of him uh, that's not in this, like, you know, March Madness setting where it's like you can really start to over <laughs> overthink uh, what you think of guys if when you're just watching them in the March Madness setting. And Caleb Houston's interesting. He was pretty disappointed in the season, but the fact that he's keeping his name in the draft, um, to me, says he's got a first round promise somewhere, um, maybe, or, or somewhere in the top 40, he's got a promise. Um, yeah, I would say like Kendall Brown, Dale and Terry uh, are the guys who interest me the most. I will say, guys, I watched Jaden Hardy back in, uh, it was November. I went and saw the G League Ignite play the Santa Cruz Warriors. And first of all, every time Jaden Hardy shoots, I was like, this ball is going in and none of them went in. Like, I don't remember what he shot like <laughs> that night. It was, it was low. And that like pretty much sums up his season with the ignite, but also like he did a lot of other like little things. Like he, he was, he made some good passes and his defense was not bad. And so I wonder if like all the other stuff that is, you know, listed as like needs to improve for him is we're, we're overrating that a little bit. So like, I don't dislike Jaden Hardy. Uh, at 20 or 25 like if if I would absolutely get the logic uh with taking him at either of those spots but uh personally I, I prefer um Kendall Brown and Dale and Terry or, or I'm, I'm big fans of both of those guys especially at, especially at 25. Okay Ben? Uh there's a guy not listed on there that I really like I I think he'll I think there's a good chance he falls there Jake LaRavia out of oh, yeah, sure. he is I he is one of my guys I just really like him he does he does everything very solidly. He's six eight. He moves well. He he's not a high flyer by any means, but he's you know he's athletic enough. He's a smart player. Shoots the ball pretty well. There's there's no big holes in his game. It feels like he's just very solid. And this was a guy who started at a much lower end Division one school. Played there two years. Transferred up to a Power five school and played well there. He, he didn't get a lot of love or he didn't get talked about enough, a lot because uh, one of his running mates and Alondis Williams got all the shine from Wake Forest, partly because the ACC was down this year. There weren't a lot of teams to talk about. And so when people did talk about Wake Forest, they were usually talking about Williams. Um, but I like LaRavia there. I think he would be my favorite at 25 um, just because of his versatility. He could probably guard two maybe three positions mm -hmm. you can't i don't think he'd be a small ball five like ej liddell he's not as strong as liddell but um he's a good shooter he's a good rebounder he does a lot of other little things really well i think so and he's a like wake forest power forward yes so you know that seems that that's worked out for the spurs yeah, the has. <laughs> yeah you know there's there's precedent there right but um, I do like Kendall Brown and Dale and Terry, and despite them being basically only an inch of height and difference, uh, they play very different roles or very different positions, rather. Um, so again, that's kind of going to depend on what the Spurs have already done in this draft with their other two picks, assuming they've kept both of those picks. Um, I know we've talked about trade scenarios earlier, yeah. with potentially 20, 25th or 9th and 20, whatever it is. Uh, I am under the impression the Spurs are not keeping all four of their picks. There's just no way. They don't yeah. have the roster space for it. Mm -hmm. Even if a couple of guys walk, I just – you you don't want to be paying that many rookies all in the same year. It's kind of wild. Um, so somebody's getting moved somewhere. Um, aside from that, um, Christian Brown is okay. He's probably at the low end. I'm going to just, <laughs> like, hey! just put it out there and like rate them properly. <laughs> yeah. um, Jake LaRavia at one for me. Kendall Brown two. Dalen Terry three. Christian Brown four. 
Caleb Houston would be a very distant five, and he needs to have incredible workouts in order to convince me. He's, he was a guy who was supposed to be the best shooter in this draft, and he shot horrifically at Michigan this year. And the fact that he stayed in the draft, like Trevor said, mean, signals to me that he's got a promise from somebody. And I think somebody is yanking his chain. I think that was just a bad decision for him. Him and Musa Diabate, for that matter, from Michigan. But at least with Diabate, you can argue he's a little more raw and he's a big man who's got a good motor and can run up and down and do stuff for you in that regard. But I thought both of those guys should have returned to Michigan this year. Um, speaking of big guys, Ben, we have not mentioned Walker Kessler or Christian Coloco, and those are two guys at 25 that I would not be surprised by because just okay. they're huge I, and they block shots and they rebound. And I would actually, I'd really like Coloco now that you've said that. Yes. So, um, just I mean, those guys, those guys both are like just like, I uh, you know, in the drop coverage <clears throat> that the Spurs like to play. Like, yeah, <laughs> those guys, those guys could murder basketballs. But Walker Kessler scares me a little bit just because he's I, I don't I don't personally like him. Uh yeah. I think he's too slow. Um yes. but um but I, I mean that that's his range, I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean his if he can show that he he changed he's changed his mechanics of his shot, then I think people are going to be very impressed. But like he's got this just bizarre wind up, like drops it by the head and like and throws it's it's super slow. It's super mechanical. It's robotic. I don't like it. It terrifies me. Paul, I said that's his range. It's specifically his range. You have yeah. an average shot at 25. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So, Kessler, I see here at 27 is average. And, and he's a maybe. The Spurs, again, might have their eye on him. Uh, as far as Coloco, he's also averages about 34. Uh, he's, he's mentioned in one um, first-round mock draft. And, again, he's also maybe. The Spurs might have interest. And then, Ben, going back to Jake LaRavia, he is um his his mock average is 33rd but multiple mocks have him in the first round again 23rd 27th 28th yeah. i see and the spurs ha uh, were supposed to have him in for a workout so there's definitely interest registered uh from the spurs is in uh, in jake laravia so again uh and then also on the, on the other two coloco and uh and, and walker kessler the spurs might have interest in them as well so again those are definitely players uh to watch there at 25 and definitely right there in the, in the 25th range and now the last one guys again the second round can be all over the place again it, 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 these are just again first of all players that are mentioned there at 38th with the spurs the second round pick uh these are one mock mentions and if there's anybody else you all would prefer you all can go ahead and say you don't have to rank these players if you don't want to uh the first uh so again the walk, one mock mentions here we have wendell moore jr six five out of duke uh his mock average is about 33rd we have max christie six six out of michigan state uh mock average is 36th uh C caleb houston again mentioned uh he, his average is 37th John Butler, seven footer out of Florida State, mock average is 37th. The Spurs are reportedly do have interest in him. And then the last player is uh, Khalifa Jop, 6'11 out of Grand uh, Canaria, uh, mock average is about 41st. All right, uh, Ben, go ahead and take this one again. Uh, is there a player here you would prefer at 38, or is there anybody not mentioned here that you prefer? 38. I mean, at, you're at this point, you're if you're the Spurs, you're you're taking your fourth, potentially yeah. fourth draft pick. You're yeah. You're just taking a flyer on a guy at this point. So it's it's not too big a deal who you take, I think. Um, but, like, I don't feel comfortable with Max Christie. I thought he was a guy who should have gone back to Michigan State. He had a lot to prove. Um, I mean, we're talking about – Wendell Moore would be a solid pick. I like him. He's a, he's a really good athlete. Um, there's a guy – the, and the problem is after like the first round, a lot of these mock drafts would get to be all over the place because there are some <laughs> yeah. people who say like Ismail Kamagate is going to be a first rounder. And then there are people who are like, well, he's going to be a mid second rounder. There's no consensus on these guys. Like, yeah, if an Ismail Kamagate is available at 38, a 6'11 big man who, mm -hmm. who moves really well, is really smooth. I'm in, but John Butler out of FSU. I actually think 38 might still be too high for him. I've I've been under the impression he's more of a UDFA. He's just – but I'm willing to bet somebody's going to draft him just because he played at FSU and Leonard Hamilton's system has produced players. Mm -hmm. I mean, it worked, it's worked for the Spurs. They got Devin Vassell. Yep. But – and then Patrick Williams was the top five pick. So um, there's precedent. For those who, guys who the Spurs allegedly had interest in. Right. There you go. So 
it's, I don't know, like John Butler would be okay, but you're, you're talking about guys like seven one and he's 175 pounds. I, that, that is what he tested at, at the combine. That's 20 pounds lighter than Chet Holmgren for anyone trying to like think of a comparison. Oh my to, right. to like think of like what that looks like. Ooh, right. That's you, a comparison. Everybody who says Chet Holmgren is thin, John Butler is thinner. So something to consider there, but he's again, he, well, not again, but he's, he only played at FSU one year. He shot the ball pretty well from three. His free throw, his free throw percentage is going to look warped because he took all of 25 free throws and wasn't particularly good. I think he hit 44% of his free throws, which can be attributed to the fact that over the course of a 30 plus game season, he took taking less than a free throw a game. Um, not to excuse the shooting, but um, <clears throat> just an explanation as to why those shooting splits are going to look weird to people. Um, <laughs> so it's, yeah, the, like the 38th pick to me is a, it's the wild, wild west, man. Just, yeah. there's, there's not a whole lot of wrong answers. There's not a whole lot of like obvious right answers unless somebody just somehow falls, but it, there's, there's not a lot of guys who would upset me. I'll put it that way. Okay. Like that's, that's about it. Unless, you know, unless you're talking about guys you're reaching for who should probably be going in the fifties then yeah. you know it's all moot to me uh trevor what's your response on this question um i do yeah i mean i i don't disagree with anything ben said um david roddy is a guy we haven't talked about like colorado state who's another one of these like, small ball four or five mm -hmm. guys who can handle a little bit uh he's interesting um i am i he also just did not get a ton of run at UCLA this year because of who was playing behind. But I really like Peyton Watson. I'm I shouldn't say I really like. I'm intrigued by Peyton Watson uh, over mm -hmm. at UCLA. Big, uh, and, uh, again, uh, another big wing, which I think, you know, I don't think the Spurs need to prioritize that at nine. I think you're just taking who you think is the best fit for your team. But after that, I do feel like big wings who can play some defense um, – a lot of should get a long look and i also think peyton watson is a guy who could who could you, you get him on a two-way contract and you basically just tell him that the austin spurs are his to uh to dominate and see what he can do and if it's a, if you do that then it's on a two-way contract and you're not like you know it's it's not like you're not giving him uh a guaranteed roster spot you know what i mean yeah. like he's not only your 15 he's, he's when you're 17 um let me look at this. Uh, Khalifa Drop would be fine. Uh, I'm with Ben. Kamigate would be great. Wendell Moore, I actually think, would be kind of a like, – Wendell Moore falls to 38, then that's, that's, that'd be fun. Uh, I don't know what to do with John Butler. I just don't. Um, Gabriel Presida is another guy we haven't talked about. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a 44 on here, Paul. He's uh, you know, one of the best shooters in the draft, 6'6", six, six Italian guy. Um, you know, maybe if you draft him, he spends another year, um, another year in Europe, and so you don't have to worry about him quite yet. But you know, you have this very good shooter uh, with some upside who the Spurs have talked to. Um, I remember he said that Ginobili, yeah. Monte Ginobili, who was part of the Spurs uh, combine team, uh, was part of the interviews and spoke to him in Italian, and he thought that was a uh, Proceed. I thought that was the coolest thing that you know. This legend started speaking Italian to him, um, which is just a fun anecdote. Um, yeah, I, you know, just whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I just pick the guy with the most upside, probably. Yeah, and just kind of what Leonard you're Miller. Like, Leonard, if Leonard Miller oh, yeah. actually keeps his name in the draft and, and is there at 38, then that's that's probably a good uh, a good guy to grab. Okay. And yeah, something that like, you guys have both mentioned, I mean, just we've mentioned this in the past too, is just the fact that there's there's just very little roster space for four picks to add on mm -hmm. this roster right now. I mean, I think what Trevor said there was really key for the second round pick is is if they do keep the pick, I think that player definitely ends up on a two-way because, again, you just don't want to put one of your 15 as, as, a, as one of these players, who, again, who, who you may not have a preference. Uh, before we close up this episode, guys, I know that you guys are the, are the two guys who are re really experts in the draft. Did you have any questions for each other, anybody specifically you're looking at or have any uh, information on before we close up this episode? I don't know. Hit us with the hard one there, man. Well, I don't know. If not, it's cool. I could say. <laughs> what if, actually, um, Trevor, what have, what have you been seeing with uh, Leonard Miller and Josh Minot? I, I saw that Minot's been getting quite a few workouts with kind of teams all over the place. I was curious what you thought of him because I 
a few times I watched Memphis, like I noticed him, but obviously I was watching for Emily Bates and Jalen Duran. Yeah. Um, I don't, I mean, my not's another guy like, um, who be, I totally forgot about him because, um, he's <clears throat> a little bit lower down here in the fifties. Um, but that would be, you know, like he seems like he can shoot a little bit, <clears throat> um, good size, but he's a project for sure. Like that's, that would be your classic, like, let's get him on a two way and have him just, you probably don't see him very much at all, uh, in San Antonio. He's, he's like Austin bound for sure. Um, and then who else did you ask about? Um, Leonard Miller. Oh yeah. That's another guy where I was like, cause I remember out of the comp like before going into the combine, I saw people being like, he's going to jump up in the lottery. And I was like, what? <laughs> um, and then he was not good at the combine and right. probably just cause he was probably a little overwhelmed. So, um, yeah, that, that um, was a, I mean, he's a high schooler. Yeah. I mean, totally intriguing he's what six nine six ten with like a seven something wingspan like yeah. and he, he has some guard skills so that's fun um but like it doesn't sound like it's totally translated yet i think i read that um g league ignite is actually an option for him this year which might be the perfect mm -hmm. setting for him to just yeah. figure stuff out um it seems like a lot of the g league ignite guys even if they start slow they just they it just constantly going up against other g league guys other professional athletes uh really helps at least get them acclimated to what they're going to get dealt with um, once they start in the league. It doesn't mean they're going to be successful, but it means it's going to help. One guy we didn't mention was uh, speaking of the ignite was Marshawn Bocamp, oh, yeah. uh, who the Spurs have worked out, and I think he's at twenty seven here. So like, I don't think he's falling out of the first round. It'd be another guy twenty five um, that could be good. Uh, ben, I was going to ask you about. Tell me about Blake Wesley because I keep seeing him in that you know like basically like anywhere from like 15 to 30 range yeah and yeah and i've seen him mock to the spurs a few times i'm like yeah wow, he has been. another ball another mm. ball dominant uh six five guy like that's a, that's the reason i don't like johnny davis because he's i feel like to maximize johnny davis's uh potential he needs the ball in his hands a lot and i feel like we're, we're past that with these guys you know with the Spurs. Yeah, the, the Spurs system will not fit that. And I think it's similar for Blake Wesley. Like that, seeing him mock to the Spurs makes no sense to me. And I think a lot of people who are doing that just like they are not taking into account fit at all. Mm -hmm. Which is infuriating to me because like, why are you putting together a mock draft if you're not considering fit? That's the whole point of this exercise. Um, you know, a big board is different where you're saying, well, these are just my top guys and how yeah. I rate completely different um but yes blake wesley is probably similar to johnny davis in that regard i would say um he actually didn't even measure out at six five he measured at six four and a quarter if we're really getting into it mm -hmm. but um he's got a plus his wingspan is plus five plus five inches he weighs 170 187 rather so i mean he's solidly built but yeah, I, I don't see him as a fit with the Spurs either. It's just they don't need another guy like that. It doesn't make sense. This this, especially after a after a season in which the Spurs led the league in assists, mm -hmm. you're gonna go out and you're gonna get more ball dominant guys to stagnate the offense. Like that doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah. I think if like someone falls, then you're not taking fit into consideration. But I, I'm, I'm with Ben. Like, I think this, like, this, this notion that, like, you always just take best player available is, like, well, especially mm -hmm. if you have four picks in a draft, like, yeah, you, don't. you probably should not take four, six, five guys. <laughs> like, you just shouldn't. So the other thing, Paul, I'm, I, I was actually curious what you think about this is, like, what do you think about the Spurs using 20 and 25 to get back into the teens? Like, is that, I mean, that's, that's, that, that maximizes the use of the picks because – then you can get guys that you would, in theory, like want to give contracts to. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, I know. I think that's for sure. I think that's definitely an option. Just because, just like I, I said, from more of a roster construction standpoint, there's just not a lot of space in this roster. You can, you just cannot fit fit four players. So I think that if you can do 20, 25, and like you said, get get you know maybe like 14, 11, something like that, then yes, you have nine and 11 or nine and 15, whatever that number is. And I think mm -hmm. that's easier to 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 build your roster with rather than having to go all four picks. And you know, so I think that's definitely uh, definitely an option. Whether uh, tra trading you know a little bit further into it, those 20 and 25, I think that's definitely an option. On that. 
All right, guys. So, um, so don't forget to visit ProjectSpurs.com, SpursCast listeners. Uh, any offseason news, we're continuing to report it over on Project Spurs. Uh, Nathan Kudla is back with a new article called DeJounte Murray's Ascension, where he kind of looks at DeJounte's rise in his playmaking and his scoring this past season uh, for, uh, when he became an all-star. Uh, ben, uh, you're continuing to get ready for the draft. Uh, you have your, your Spurs prospect watch series over on ProjectSpurs.com. Thanks to Ben and Trevor for joining me on this episode of the Spurs cast. And also thanks to Joe Garcia for mixing and producing this episode. From all of us at Product Spurs, stay safe and have a great day.